As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner and my friend, I've been waiting for you. And today we're rendezvousing around the wonderful Word of God. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to speak to us today and show us something new from the pages of the Bible that will help us. In Jesus' name, amen. And today I'm starting a brand new series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. The subtitle says, Positioning Yourself to Live in God's Supernatural Power, Provision, and Protection. It's actually one of my favorite teachings that I've ever done. And if you want to know the will of God, this really is a series that you need to devour. You know, it's one thing to know the will of God. It's another thing to be in it. And you really don't experience God's supernatural power, provision, and protection until you're in the will of God. Beginning from where you are to where you need to be sometimes is a leap of faith. And today, and in these programs, I want to help you learn how to walk from where you are right smack into the middle of the will of God. And this series comes with a wonderful study guide. Look at the size of it. I mean, it's page after page after page. You will devour this study guide. And I have a book by the same title called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. I love this book. And my friends, we all want to do the will of God. And I want you to do the will of God. And I know that you want to do the will of God. So please order your copy of this book today. And you can order all of these things by going online or by just giving us a call right now. We would love to hear from you. And if you're not a partner with our ministry, would you please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry? A partner is someone who gives regularly, financially into our ministry so that we can take this teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth. And we really are taking this teaching to the ends of the earth. Ay, ay, ay. The testimonies are coming from every nook and cranny of the corner of the earth from people whose lives are being changed. And when you become a partner, you help us do that. It takes a lot of money. But our partners put fuel in the tank, which enables us to do this job, which God gave to us. So thank you, partners. You're such an important part of this team. But if you want to become a partner, we'll send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. It's how to survive, thrive, and overcome in the midst of difficult situations. And Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. It may look small, but wow, it is really power-packed. But today we're going to have a great time in the Word of God. Reach for your Bible, and I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today we're beginning my brand new series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. But before we get into the teaching, I want to read three wonderful testimonies we just received from friends and partners who called for prayer. Today, we spoke to a person who asked to be filled with the Holy Spirit. She's never called before, but we gave her a quick explanation of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and then we prayed. And in moments, she began to speak in other tongues and weep. She wept through the rest of the call, and we were praising God together. Praise God. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, give us a call. We'll pray with you, and Jesus will fill you with the Holy Spirit. But here is another wonderful testimony. Precious parents have asked for prayer for a son with struggles. Today they called back ecstatic and crying with joy because God is hearing and answering prayer about their son. We gave them a scripture verse to stand on by faith, and they wanted to tell Pastor Rick how much they appreciate the ministry and the people who pray. The mother said she never feels condemned by us and is always encouraged by calling. She's over the top, full of the joy of the Lord. Praise God. If you know someone in your life that is struggling, call us. We will pray for them as well. But here's one more testimony today. 
I can hardly believe I've already been a partner with your ministry for five years. That is so awesome. Even though I'm on Social Security, God is well able to provide seed to sow, and it thrills me to know I have a part in this ministry to help people around the world, and especially people who live in Russia. Amen. Thank you for being a faithful partner. And again, if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. And if you have a need on your heart and you want somebody to pray with you, you can send us an email or you can call us right now. But reach for your Bible. And today we're beginning the new series, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And I call today's teaching, The Surprising Call of God. If you study the whole Bible from the very beginning to the very end, you find that there are individuals who had a surprise encounter with God that set their life on a brand new course. And today I'm going to give you two examples. First, we're going to begin with Abraham. Abraham. Abraham was a pagan who lived in Ur of the Chaldees. Abraham was a wealthy man. He was a worshiper of the moon, which was very typical in Ur of the Chaldees. Very prosperous. But one day he had a surprise encounter with God. And you can read about that surprise encounter in Acts chapter 7, verse 2, where the Bible says the God of glory appeared unto Abraham when he was living in Mesopotamia. And when the Bible says the God of glory, that word glory carries the idea of the heavy, weighty presence of God. Suddenly Abraham, a pagan, found himself surrounded in the dazzling, heavy, weighty presence of God. Didn't know how he got there, but somehow he walked into this divine presence. And the Bible says the God of glory appeared to him. This was a surprise encounter. And in fact, God even spoke to Abraham and preached the gospel to him. We read about that in Galatians chapter 3, where the Bible says God preached the gospel to Abraham. is that amazing? Abraham may have been the first person to really hear the full gospel message about Jesus, and he heard it from the mouth of God himself when he was standing in that cloud of glory. And it totally put his life on a brand new trajectory. He ended up following the call of God for his life. But there's also the example of the Apostle Paul, and this is really going to be our focus in these programs. We know that the Apostle Paul also had the surprising call of God. Paul previously was known as Saul, and he was a very devout Jew. In fact, he was so devout, he was a Pharisee, which means he was at the very top of his denomination, and he absolutely detested this new Christian sect. He despised them. And in fact, he believed that he had a responsibility to help eradicate them. So he received permission from the chief priest in the city of Jerusalem, and he began to go throughout the whole city of Jerusalem. I'm going to show you this today. And then when he was finished with Jerusalem, he was on the road to Damascus to do it again. But now he was going to expunge all the Christians who were in Damascus. He was filled with hatred for these new Christians when suddenly... On the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with Christ, just like Abraham, found himself in a blaze of glory. Saul of Tarsus looked up and he saw Jesus standing there. He was so stunned, he fell from his horse and Jesus began to converse with him. And this man who once hated Christians and was committed to exterminate them now became one of the greatest champions for the faith that has ever lived. But... When you study the story of both of these men, you find that in the moment of their conversion, in the very moment of their conversion, God revealed his will for their lives to both of them. Abraham heard very clearly what God wanted him to do. Very clearly, it was almost unmistakable. In the same way, when Saul of Tarsus got saved on the road to Damascus, in that very moment that he got saved, he heard God's will for his life. It was so clear, it was almost unmistakable. But both of these men made mistakes. They became confused. They made some wrong calculations. They got off track, and it took them time to get back on track again. And the reason that I'm making a point of this is because if you get off track, you can get back on track. 
you know, all of us have made mistakes or we've heard the Lord say something that we've misinterpreted. And finally, we understood we made a mistake. Well, rather than keep going in the wrong direction, sometimes you just need to self-correct and get back on track. But the Apostle Paul really had a hard time believing he was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles because he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews by birth. We read about this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, where Paul writes that he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and as touching the law, he was a Pharisee. This is really fundamental to understand why Paul had a hard time really coming to grips with the fact that God would send him as an apostle to Gentiles. When Paul said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, it meant he was stating there was no mixture in his lineage. He was a pure blood when it came to who he was. His parents were Hebrew. Their home was Hebrew. The language they spoke in their home was Hebrew. He was raised to think like a Hebrew. He honored the customs and the rituals of the Hebrews and the religion of the Hebrews. And then by stating that he was a Pharisee, wow, Paul was declaring that he was at the top of his denomination. And it was a particular group that was more rigid and strict than anyone else. They had no toleration of anyone that was not a Jew. And as growing up as a Hebrew boy, Every day, Paul was taught to pray the same prayer that all religious Hebrew boys prayed. Every day when they woke up, they said, God, I thank you that I was born a Jew and not a Gentile. And by praying this every day, they understood that they were superior to Gentiles. And in fact, they saw Gentiles as a low class. They loathed Gentiles. And in fact, Jews in general loathe Gentiles so much that they viewed them as simply being dirty, disgusting, uncircumcised, sexually immoral, idol worshiping adulterers. That's really how they looked at Gentiles. And that's one reason why Israel despised the fact that the Romans had occupied their land. They felt their land had been occupied and they were being ruled by low level, dirty, filthy, stinking Gentiles. And in fact, they loathed Gentiles so much that they were taught not even to sit at the same table with a Gentile. And if they were sitting there and a Gentile came and sat down, they were to get up and were to move to another table. They were not even to share a table with a Gentile. And Jews pretty much believe the only contact they should have with a Gentile is if they hired a Gentile to stand out the front door of their house to wash their dirty feet before they walked into their home. In their mind, that's what a Gentile was good for. They were good for washing your dirty feet. Wow. So you can understand Paul did not grow up with a great attitude toward Gentiles. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and as touching the law, he was a Pharisee. This is what Paul, the Hebrew of the Hebrews and a Pharisee had been taught all of his life when he was growing up. And before surrendering to Christ, he was known of Saul as Tarsus. And as I've told you, he had been empowered with letters or permission from the high priest in Jerusalem to exterminate those who were members of the new Christian sect. And we can read about that in Acts chapter 8, verse 3, where the New King James Version says, As for Saul, he make havoc of the church, entering into every house and dragging off men and women and committing them to prison. But notice that word havoc. The word havoc in Greek literally means to ravage, destroy, to ruin, or to devastate. It described people who were mauled to death by an animal that was extremely dangerous. It depicted the devastation left by wild boars or wild pigs that were diseased, vicious, and deadly. These diseased animals not only destroyed property and livestock, but they also maimed and killed people. And these wild boars roamed all over the land of Israel, and they were very famous for going into villages, destroying everything, just making everything a mess, and even dragging people with their big teeth out where they would maul them to death. It was just horrible what these wild pigs did. 
And now that very word is used by Luke, the doctor, when he records what Saul was doing before he got saved. And if you really want to know what this verse means, here's the RIV of Acts 8, verse 3. Listen to this. Saul's behavior was so atrocious that everywhere he went, destruction was left in his path. He acted a lot like the diseased, vicious, and deadly wild boars or wild pigs that notoriously attacked and mauled victims, leaving death and destruction in their paths. In a similar manner, Paul Saul attacked the church and made havoc of it. He raided private homes and forcibly seized men and women and dragged them away so he could see to it that they were locked up in prison. That is who he was before he came to Christ. But now on the road to Damascus, he's had a surprise encounter with God that has put him on a new trajectory. But now wait, you might say, was he really that bad before he came to Christ? Well, let's listen to his own testimony. And when you read his own words in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, Paul himself says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. The word blasphemer is a translation of the Greek word blasphemeo, which means to slander or to accuse. It means to speak derogatory words for the purpose of injuring or harming one's reputation. It signifies foul, profane, unclean language. It is any derogatory speech intended to defame, injure, or harm another's reputation or any type of debasing, derogatory, nasty, shameful, or ugly speech or behavior intended to humiliate someone. Now Paul uses this very word to describe himself. But that's not all. He goes on to say that he was a persecutor. The word persecutor form the Greek word dioko, which means to hunt, to chase, or to pursue. It's where you get the word for persecution. And it denoted the actions of a hunter who followed after an animal in order to apprehend, capture, and kill it. And of course, we've seen that Paul was pursuing believers as if they were animals that needed to be captured and killed. But then he adds he was injurious. The word injurious is a very interesting Greek word. Now listen to this. It depicts one who in pride and insolence deliberately mistreats, deliberately wrongs, and deliberately hurts another. It is treated it is treatment calculated to publicly insult and openly humiliate the person who suffers it. And more importantly, it depicts one who derives pleasure from inflicting pain on someone else, which means not only was he blasphemous, not only was he seeking these believers to destroy them, he enjoyed it when he got his hands on them and he saw them in pain. And the RIV of 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13 is like this. Before I came to Christ, I was a slanderer who took delight in speaking nasty and derogatory words about those I thought were unfit for society. My goal was to do all I could to defame, injure, and harm their reputations. In fact, I was the most committed persecutor you can imagine, relentlessly hunting for those with whom I didn't agree. And my goal was to pursue them, capture them, and see to it that they were put away forever or even exterminated. I was so sick and twisted that I actually got a kick out of doing it and derived pleasure from the pain I inflicted on others. Back in those days, nothing gave me more gratification than those moments when I abused and assaulted those I didn't like. That is literally what Paul said in these verses. That is the RIV. My friends, that is who he was before he came to Christ. But all of that changed on the road to Damascus in 37 AD. And we read what happened to him in Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 6, where the Bible says, and as he, that Saul, journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? And he, that's Saul, 
trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But notice in verse 15, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the word Lord is the Greek word kurios, which describes a supreme master or one who has absolute control. And when he called Jesus Lord, bam, this was the moment of his conversion. This was a surprise conversion. He didn't pray a sinner's prayer. He just said, who are you, Lord? Well, according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in a flash, he became a Christian. And my friends, this put him on a brand new trajectory. But I want to tell you, if Saul of Tarsus can get saved, anybody can get saved. And if you've never called Jesus the Lord of your life, you can do it right now. We'll do it with you. If you'll give us a call or send us an email, we'll pray with you. And bam, in a moment, God will put you on a new trajectory. You'll discover his will for your life and will walk you in to the greatest success you've ever had. But I'll be back in just a moment. And I'm going to pray for you. Someone asked the question, has Noah's Ark ever been discovered? Well, yes, it has. It rests in the lower mountains of Ararat. People have been looking for it in the wrong place. People have been looking for it on Mount Ararat, but the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter eight, verse four, that the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat, and the mountain range of Ararat is very large, and there's a lower mountain, which is called Mount Judy, which is in the mountain range of Ararat, and there on the slopes of Mount Judy is a massive ship-shaped formation, which now scientists and geologists are affirming really is the ruins of Noah's Ark. I have been there and you ought to get my series called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters and the World Before the Flood, where I show you different visual images of what remains of Noah's Ark, which really lies in the lower mountains of Ararat. Do you hunger to know what God wants to do with your life or what steps to take to fulfill the perfect will of God? Or maybe you need an answer from heaven for a life-changing decision. You can learn to hear from heaven to know God's plan today with Rick Renner's updated teaching series, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick answers the hard questions about the often misunderstood subject of hearing God's voice and how you can know His will for your life. He shares from his own life how he discovered the will of God and the bumps he encountered along the way. Titles in this series include Coming to Grips with the Call of God for Your Life, being in the right place at the right time. Don't misinterpret what God told you. Redirecting and getting back on course. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $24. We're also offering Rick's book by the same name, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick delves into the journey of the Apostle Paul and other key Bible characters as they sought to walk out God's will for their lives. Along the way in this fascinating process, Rick will reveal vital lessons to help you in your own pursuit to fully align with God's will for your life, which is the key to your lasting success. This book can be yours for only $19. Bundle the series and the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Don't miss this special offer. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, where do you think I am right now? This is my old TV set. I used to teach all my programs and come to you from right here in every program, but now I'm working in the new studio because you helped us to build it and I want to say thank you. But you may ask, well, what's going to go on in this old studio? This old studio is being transformed into a new TV studio for our new TV network, which is called the Good News Channel. Think about that. God gave us a satellite network and a federal channel in Russia that has the potential to reach into every home. We actually have a federal license which allows us to take the signal of our network into every single home. That is just amazing. And I don't think anyone else has ever received this particular license. Only God could open a door that big. Wow. And now we're renovating the old studio. We're gonna completely change it 
And from this space, we're gonna begin filming new daily TV programs for the new satellite network and the new federal channel, which is called the Good News Channel. The gospel is such good news, and we need to take it into every home. And if you're already a part of the giving team, thank you so much for being a partner. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about being part of the giving team to help us renovate this studio and to develop our new channel so we can take it into every home of Russia and not just Russia, but around the world to wherever there are Russian speakers. They need the Word of God. And together with you, we can take them the light that will transform their lives. And I want to say thank you now for being a part of our giving team. Well, today we have just got started in the brand new series called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And I want you to please order the entire series. It's 15 parts. It's positioning yourself to live in God's supernatural power, provision, and protection. And today we've been looking at the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul, a great champion of the faith. And while God's will was revealed to him the moment he was saved, you're going to see that in the next program. But this also comes with a wonderful study guide. And I want you to be sure to also order the book. The book is just so wonderful. And look, it's not a big one. You know, most of my books are huge. But this book is so easy to read. It is so practical. It will answer all your questions about how to know the will of God for your life and how to get from where you are right smack dab in the middle of God's will. And that's why I want you to have this book. And you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us, remember, we're here to pray for you. You can't get away from us without being prayed for. So if you need prayer, reach out to us. We will pray for you. You can call us or send us an email. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have put your power forth to save every one of us and to set our life on a new trajectory. Thank you for that. Thank you for what you're doing in my friend's life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you in the next program. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.